This is the first of a three-part sequence on repetition structures in MATLAB. In this video, we'll briefly review the purpose and syntax of for and while loops. In the other two videos, we'll implement for and while loops in MATLAB. Keep in mind that this is intended to be a refresher, so we won't go too far in depth. Holistically, any computer program can be interpreted as a series of instructions. All programs can be built from a combination of repetition structures and decision structures. As the name implies, repetition structures tell the computer to repeatedly execute a block of code. There are two main repetition structures in MATLAB, the for and the while loop. Both are pretty similar. We'll discuss the differences in a bit. Decision structures tell the computer to choose between some options based on whether a condition is met. There are many ways to create decision structures in MATLAB. The most common is the if, else if, and else statement. Logical operators are a fancy way of simplifying the above statements. And finally, the switch statement isn't used very often in this class, but can be the best option of these three depending on the context. For now, let's only focus on the repetition structures, so the for and the while loops. A repetition structure is used to repeat a block of code. But why do we need to repeat code in the first place? In numerical methods, we often need to perform the same calculation not just once, but many times. Perhaps we need to apply the same operation to a data set with 1000 points. Or perhaps we need to store the results of a calculation in a big matrix. We can use repetition structures to do these things. Here's a simple example for illustrative purposes. Consider this four element row vector A. We want to have each element in A and store the results in a new vector B. How could we do this in MATLAB? We could just type B equals A over two in MATLAB as shown here, but let's think about this from an outsider's perspective. Logically, you would look at the first element in A, cut it in half, and store the new number in the first element of the B vector. Then you would move to the second element in A, cut it in half, and store the result in the second element of the B vector. You would repeat this process for the last two elements. We can type this entire procedure out in MATLAB down here. If you do this, you'll get the following command window output. Clearly, our method worked. The elements of our B vector are indeed the corresponding elements of the A vector cut in half. But we had to manually type out every element of the B vector which is a pain even for this very simple example. In fact, I copied and pasted the first line to make the other three lines. What if our A vector was a million elements long instead of four? We obviously couldn't copy and paste this a million times, so we need to rely on repetition structures to help us. For and while loops are essentially the programming equivalent of copy and paste. So we have two options, a for loop and a while loop. Let's start with a for loop. A for loop repeats a chunk of code a pre-specified number of times. The basic anatomy of a for loop is as follows. We start with the for keyword. Once you type the word for into MATLAB, the word will turn blue, indicating we have typed in a keyword. Then we have some variable which keeps track of how many times the loop iterates. This is typically called an index variable. We assign it to a vector to dictate the index's starting value ending value, and the step size. Then we have whatever code is to be repeated inside the body of the for loop. All for loops must be closed with this blue end keyword. When the for loop is executed, the computer compares the value of index to finish. If index is less than or equal to finish, the program will execute the statements. When it reaches the end keyword, index is incremented by step, and the program goes back to the start for the next iteration. This process continues until index exceeds finish, at which point the loop terminates. It's pretty common in practice for step to be one. If so, we can drop step, since MATLAB will automatically increment vectors by one if step is not supplied. Start, step, and finish can be anything we want, including negative numbers and decimals. Index is a variable, so we can call it anything we want. It's most typically named i. But with all variables, you should be as descriptive as possible. If you're working with complex numbers in a for loop, you should probably avoid naming the index variable i to avoid any confusion with the imaginary number i. Now let's examine while loops. While loops run as long as a certain condition is true. This means it could run once, 
twice, a hundred times, or anything in between. It could also not execute at all if the condition is never met. It can also run forever, which is problematic. We typically use while loops when we want to repeat code, but we don't know how many times to repeat it. For instance, if we want to perform an operation until we meet a certain error tolerance, we keep iterating until we meet the tolerance. We might not know how long it'll take to reach that tolerance, so we can use a while loop to keep iterating until we eventually hit it. A while loop looks pretty structurally similar to a for loop. We have the blue while keyword and then some condition. If this condition evaluates to true, the code executes the statements in the body of the while loop. When the computer reaches the blue end keyword, it goes back to the start and checks if the condition is still true. If so, it executes the statements again, and so forth, until this condition is finally false. In a while loop, you typically have to manually increment or decrement some variable within the statement block to eventually switch condition from true to false. We'll see an example of this in the third video. So should you use a for loop or a while loop? In my opinion, the golden rule is if you know the number of iterations ahead of time. If so, the for loop is probably your best bet since that's what it's made for. We typically use a for loop to populate the elements of a vector or matrix since we usually know how large that vector or matrix is beforehand. In our example a few slides back with the a and b vectors, we could use a for loop perfectly here since we know the a and b vectors will both have four elements. On the other hand, use a while loop if you don't know how many times you need to iterate. As mentioned, a classic example in numerical methods is reaching some error tolerance. Depending on the specific problem, the tolerance might be met in 1 iterations, 100 iterations, or anywhere in between. In general, for loops and while loops are somewhat interchangeable. Let's say you want to repeat a calculation 5 times. The for loop seems like a good choice because you know you're going to be doing it 5 times. You can alternatively use a while loop and manually trigger the while loop to exit after the fifth iteration. Here's a semi-practical example of when to use for versus while loops. When I was in high school, I served as an umpire in my local Little League. We would sign up for however many games per week we wanted, and we would be paid at the end of the week. Obviously, we wouldn't be paid if we didn't work any games in that week. When I didn't have much homework, I would work pretty often. But my schedule started fluctuating once college applications, AP tests, and all that fun stuff began consuming my life. Sometimes I would work a bunch of games in one week and then not work at all for the next two or three weeks. Suppose I wanted to answer the question, how much money did I earn in a given month? Here, I could use a while loop to loop through a month and tally all the money from the paychecks I earned within that month. Because my schedule was so erratic, I could have anywhere from one to four paychecks in any month. Therefore, a while loop seems the most appropriate since the number of paychecks per month can change. But what if I wanted to answer this question? Now, a for loop seems appropriate because I'm just counting the last four paychecks. I don't care if those four paychecks occurred within a month or not, I just want to know how much I made. Because we know we're counting four paychecks, a for loop seems more appropriate than a while loop. Of course, you can use a for or while loop to answer either question. Ultimately, it comes down to judgment and preference, which is why you should practice as much as possible so you get a feel for when to use one loop over the other. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll practice writing for loops in MATLAB, and in the last video, we'll practice writing while loops.